Chris, let me start with you. Were you surprised at anything that happened with the bond yields this week? Well, yes, uh, surprised that, uh, as, as Larry Summers said, that bond yields are heading up and I think going to be heading higher. I mean, he's talking 50 basis points. So uh, I'm, I'm cautious and I would be worried about trying to trade fixed income in here. I like it as a buy and hold, uh, but I don't like it from a trading standpoint. Yields are going to head up. 4.75, Chris, do you agree with Larry on that? Well, I'm not going to argue with Larry Summers, <laughs> and I'm not going to try and nail down that number. Uh, that's a big reach, like I said, a half a point from here. But I do think interest rates are going to stay higher for longer. We're not going to see rates go back down like a lot of the street had predicted. Chanel, you really focus on fixed income. What did you make of the bond market this week? So, honestly, I think this is the bond market finally coming around, coming to terms with certain facts. Here's the thing. For a long time, uh, even the Fed, when you, when you look at the Fed funds rate, the long-term Fed funds rate, they're looking at 2.5%. If inflation were 2%, this is real yields of half a percent. If I look at not the anomaly of the post-global financial crisis period, but I look at from the 1950s all the way up to 2007-8, really, we're looking at yields, real yields, which were around two to two and a half percent. So here's the thing, that's the math. You take, even if we get back to 2% inflation, real, real yields at two, two and a half percent takes you to four and a half already. So, and that's at the short term. And then you have term premium, if you're looking at 10 year yields. Yeah, I actually think 4.75 is not unreasonable, not at all. Chris, when we talk about these bond yields, we talk about things like expectations of, uh, of inflation, and we talk about what the Fed is likely to do. What about the, the demand or maybe the supply of treasuries? Because it's clear the United States government is going to have to borrow a lot more. At the same time, for example, Japan may not want as many. Well, exactly, David. The bond market and the yield curve is nothing but supply and demand, and there is a ton of supply coming. Uh, the Treasury Department has, uh, just due to all those budget negotiations, a huge calendar in front of them. And we are seeing buyers being a little bit cautious. You just reported about China and its weak economy. They've got to protect their currency, uh, so they may not have as much capital. I think there's going to be a lot of focus on the tail on all of our bond auctions. In other words, how much demand and how clean those auctions are. <laughs> I always said, we're a debtor nation, and we better pay attention to that. We've got to borrow money, and it may be a bit tougher. You know, we borrowed a lot of money for fiscal stimulus. We've had a lot go into the system. Are we done yet? Where are we right now in fiscal and supporting this economy? Honestly, you're look we are looking at an economy which is through almost every estimate of full employment. And we have massively expansionary fiscal policy. This is getting hidden in, you know, yes, there's discussion about, you know, terrible budget negotiations, all of that. But fundamentally, the economy in terms of employment is doing well. And at the same time, we are seeing fiscal deficits, which are close to records. Five and a half percent odd last year. This year, it's at least as much, if not higher. And the CBO expects six percentish fiscal deficits for the next several years. This is a lot of issuance. And definitely that's a supply dynamic that's important. At the same time, you mentioned Japan, and Japan's very important uh, important here because J we always focus on China, but actually it's Japan, which is, the, which is the largest holder of U.S. treasuries outside the U.S. And over the next few months, at some point, the Japanese central bank is going to look tight, begin tightening monetary policy, at which point we will see a reduction in demand for U.S. treasuries. All of this is additional pressure on uh, yields. Uh, Chris, all that said, the U.S. economy thus far has been, I think it's fair to say, surprisingly strong, at least surprising to many of us watching this. Uh, a lot of it, I think, because of consumer spending. Uh, at what point do we run out of the so-called excess savings? Well, David, I think the uh, San Francisco Fed put on an excellent paper this week predicting that we may be seeing the end of that. And you had a great intro where he said the U.S. consumer is strong for now. So I'm starting to see little cracks, little signs of worry for me. Uh, our desk uh, uncovered that U.S. Uh, credit card applications literally fell off the shelf. 
Um, and that doesn't portend that people won't increase and start to borrow. But I'm worried the consumer is going to run out of money. And I think the San Francisco Fed really is spot on. If the consumer slows down, then we're going to see the impact of these higher interest rates. 22-year highs in mortgages and rates, that's got to hurt. And then we may actually finally see this recession that I've been predicting for over a year. Shana, as I say, you're, you're CIO for fixed income at Franklin Temple, but you watch the equity market. What about the valuations right now? Because I, I looked at it today on the Bloomberg. We're over 20 times earnings in the price for the SP 500. Can we keep that up? So, okay, I'm going to I'm going to be very careful here because definitely I'm more fixed income than uh, on the equity side of things. But I do think on the fixed income side, we have finally seen some acceptance that higher yields are coming. On the equity side, I think we're at the beginning of this process. Mm. I think, again, in your intro, you mentioned that higher yields are going to have an impact on the equity market. And I do think those yields are higher. And more importantly, they're probably higher for a while to stay. And, you know, something that Chris mentioned, the strength of the U.S. consumer, I accept. I think, actually, the U.S. consumer probably is going to start weakening from a very strong point. And while the consumer might be beginning to run out of pandemic-era savings, from a debt perspective, in real terms, the consumer is actually in pretty good shape. In real terms, the U.S. consumer can actually borrow a bit more and still look pretty healthy. Yeah, last thought on this, Chris, as we look at the GDP estimates, for example, Atlanta GDP, GDP now is way up there at 5.7, something like that. And a lot of people are taking their estimates. Is the, is the economy strong enough to keep going? Well, David, the elves uh, pointed out they're expecting uh, a lower market. Uh, and I think they're spot on. I think that's a great indicator for people that that people look ahead and you hit it right on the, the nail. Price earnings ratio is really set for expectations in higher levels. Um, and I don't know if those earnings, while we've done okay in this earnings period, everybody is warning that the future earnings are too difficult and that may be a problem in that P.E. ratio that the earnings falter and that means the price has to come down and the elves will be right.